Hi, my name is Rebecca Dolan. I'm the Shakespeare School's coordinator at the Gaiety School of Acting. As part of our 2018 production of Macbeth, we have produced these post-show videos for you. I hope you find them informative, and if you do, please subscribe to our page and comment below. Act one, scene seven. This scene is crucial to understanding the changing dynamic in the relationship between Lady Macbeth and Macbeth. Macbeth has just finished his soliloquy, Duncan is still feasting, and Lady Macbeth has come to find her husband. I know, what news? He has almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? Has he asked for me? No, you not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honoured me of late. I have bought golden opinion from all sorts of people, which would be now worn in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Macbeth states that they will not go forward with their plan to kill Duncan. He is happy with his new title. Let's see how Lady Macbeth reacts. Was the hope drunk, wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time, such I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valour as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemst the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would like the poor cat me added? Lady Macbeth questions his masculinity, his character, and his love for her. She uses the term pale and green, which could refer to anemia, a disease which at the time was thought to only afflict young virgin girls. When she mentions the poor cat in the adage, she's talking about the cat who liked to eat fish, but refused to get his feet wet. She's reminding Macbeth that unless he acts, he will not get what he wishes. Prithee, yeah, peace. I dare do all that may become a man who dares do more is none. Macbeth responds that he does all that is fit and right and becoming of a man. Whoever does more is not a man at all. Let's see how this argument works with Lady Macbeth. What beast wast then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves and that their fitness now does unmake you. Lady Macbeth expresses her disappointment in him as he has let her down. When the time and place was not fit to kill Duncan, then he would have done it. But now that they have the perfect opportunity to kill him, he is backing out. Her harshest argument is yet to come. I have given suck and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. We start by seeing Lady Macbeth express love and tenderness for her child. However, she quickly turns monstrous when she states that she would have dashed out its brains if she had so promised. We now see the depths that Lady Macbeth would go to to support her husband. If we should feel- We fail. Screw your courage to this sticking place and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains will I, with wine and wassail, so convince that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume. When in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death, what cannot you and I perform on the unguarded Duncan? Bring forth men, children only. Thy undaunted metal should comprise of nothing but meals. Shall it not be received? When we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and use their very daggers that they have done. Lady Macbeth emerges as the main instigator in the plot to murder Duncan. She lays out her plan step by step. She is convinced they will not fail. Macbeth praises his wife for her fearlessness. It is clear that there has been a power shift in their relationship and Macbeth is now acquiescing to his wife dares receive it other, as we shall make our griefs and clamour roar upon his death. I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible fate. Away, I mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. <laughs> 